Hi everyone, Dr. Angela here with you. Welcome back to Pretty Well. In this video, we're gonna focus on melatonin and cortisol and how this is relevant to thinking about our immune systems and viral infection and inflammation. So there's been some um, interesting conversation circulating online and an interesting paper that I read about thinking about using some supplemental melatonin in the prevention of um, coronavirus COVID-19 in helping us think about supporting our immune systems to work more efficiently during this time of COVID-19. So let's talk about this a little bit more. Dr. Patty and I always like to think with you guys about um, our unique physiology, our unique genetics, um, our unique risk factors, and when certain things might make sense. So melatonin is a hormone that helps us with our sleep cycle, and it is normally made in the pineal gland of our brain and um, does help us to fall asleep, stay asleep, have sound sleep. Uh, we can certainly have melatonin production levels turned down with age. Uh, something that's kind of interesting to think about when we look at younger folks, little children, adolescents, middle-aged people, and then older people, and how much each of those groups tend to sleep. I mean, certainly we see younger people sleep far more, and um, our oldest population generally tends to sleep less. And, um, you know, Perhaps there's more than melatonin at work there, but certainly interesting to think about the correlation between lower melatonin output in later years and decreased ability to sleep and sleeping fewer hours. Um, and the quality of sleep tends to be lighter, generally for most people who are older. So another um, area to think about in terms of melatonin disruption, if we tend to have travel schedules where we are constantly um, changing time zones, that can be something that uh, disrupts melatonin. Most of us are not traveling so much right now with COVID-19, but some of us still have jobs where we have night shifts and working night shifts is certainly uh, correlated with changes in our melatonin secretion. Also, one that most of us um, really are affected by is different kinds of light exposure, blue light exposure at night. A lot of us are on screens. A lot of us are watching movies late at night, are watching news late at night, are on our computers, are on our social media feeds. Um, that can certainly expose us to more blue light before bed and turn down melatonin secretion. So certainly wanting to think about if we're in um, any of these groups where our melatonin production might be affected, um, particularly if we're feeling stressed, that we might consider supplementing with some additional melatonin if we don't already do it. Um, when we are stressed, we tend to put out more cortisol, and cortisol is inversely proportional to melatonin. So don't wanna demonize cortisol. We certainly need healthy cortisol levels. Cortisol has some very important functions in terms of proper immune function as well at physiologic levels that are normal and not elevated in the body. Um, but we want to make sure we have adequate amounts of each hormone at the right time. So we would generally want to see cortisol highest in the morning when we need to wake up and move around and have motivation and energy to do our day and see melatonin levels rise the most in the evening to help us sleep and then turn down towards the morning so that we can wake up. Um, in addition to sleep cycle, one of the things I was reminded of as I was brushing up on melatonin pathways in the body is that melatonin is also particularly helpful for helping us um, quench reactive oxygen species. So we've been talking about this theme of um, with coronavirus 19, one of the elevated risk factors for potential respiratory complication is having lower antioxidant status slash if we have more inflammation happen in the body, if we have overreactive um, immune responses, certainly things like cytokine storm that we burn through a lot of our antioxidants, that we have more oxidative stress and damage happen in our lungs. And so Melatonin is another um, hormone 
um, that can be taken as a supplement as well that is effective at helping us keep our antioxidant stores elevated. Uh, one thing to note that is interesting, again, going back to our elderly populations who tend to sleep less. Older people also tend to have lower levels of antioxidants and that if we are um, dealing with increased reactive oxygen species in our body, our, bio, our body tends to prioritize resources where they're most needed. And so we could potentially use our melatonin stores to uh, address elevated reactive oxygen species and then have less melatonin available for us when we're sleeping or needing to go to sleep. So um, I think considering how safe melatonin is, it certainly is not a bad idea to supplement with a little bit of low dose melatonin if we're in any of these kind of at risk categories where we've had elevated sleep, maybe we have sorry, elevated sleep, if we have disrupted sleep, if we have um, increased stress, if we have night shift work, if we tend to be on our computer screens late, um, just to make sure that we're getting an adequate number of sleep hours and sound sleep hours and good quality rest. There are many studies that have been done over the years where if we are having insufficient sleep, if we are having light sleep, disrupted sleep, that we are at increased risk for all kinds of of viral infections, including things like common cold. So it certainly makes sense that at a time when we have increased risk to um, a virus that, you know, many of us who will contract COVID-19 may not have, you know, severe respiratory complications, but if there's at all a chance doing anything we can do to help our bodies minimize risk of complications that um, could be serious. So again, melatonin is a very benign hormone that's an antioxidant. The one thing I will say is we really wanna think about dose. Um, you know, we don't need a lot of melatonin. Sometimes higher dose melatonin has been used as a supplement in cancer survivors, but because melatonin and cortisol have an inverse proportional curve, you know, if we are already running a little bit on the low side in terms of our morning cortisol rhythms, if we take a huge dose of melatonin at night, we could suppress our morning cortisol rhythm and not feel as good or feel really tired or groggy in the morning. So, you know, we can start with really low dose melatonin, 0.3 milligrams, 0.5 milligrams, and see how we feel. I have been taking for about a year now, about two and a half milligrams, a little lozenge that I take before bed. And I do really well on that dose. Sometimes I take um, one milligram, you know, I, I switch it up. So you can definitely play with what feels helpful in your own body. But just to consider melatonin is one more tool in our toolbox to keep antioxidant reserves high, to keep anxiety low, um, help support good quality sleep, and turn down inflammation in our body. Um, there is uh, some information about a specific pathway that COVID affects in terms of inflammation, one of the cytokines, and that melatonin is helpful uh, for that specific pathway. So I'll put that information in the description box for people who want the exact name <laughs> um, and any um, papers that are relevant to um, this information on melatonin. Um, a couple just other small you know, notes on cortisol, again, back to diet and lifestyle practices. Um, when we have sugar and when we have alcohol, this can also affect our cortisol rhythm and melatonin rhythm. So I know we want comfort food. I know we want comfort tools. Many of us are anxious right now, but just be careful with how many stressors we take on versus how much support we put in right now for our physiology and our immune systems. Hope this has been a useful little tidbit on um, how thinking about our melatonin and cortisol levels and stress levels, uh, which relate to cortisol and melatonin um, at this time might help us um, support our immune system and uh, our ability to prevent virus and recover from virus if we are exposed to COVID-19. Take wonderful care, everyone. Please continue to give us your um, 
questions, your thoughts, your comments, your content requests, and we will do our best to get to them. And everyone in the community, please answer all the questions that you know the answers to. And Dr. Patty and I will be back here with you just as soon as we can. Take wonderful care. We love you all.